What's up everybody, it's Blaze from Funbox here and let's continue on with the programming section, the first programming section of our turn-based combat tutorial series. For this video, just like I said in the theory section, we're going to cover writing up this manager that we have set up. In the video after this one, we're going to focus on the initialize phase, but let's get the skeleton for this manager set up. Um, just to make it known for you guys, we are going to be coming back to this manager and adding code as this series progresses. So make sure that your manager game object is intact um, and is up to date as we go through this series. To do that, let's get started. We are going to create an object and I'm going to call mine C manager. You can give your object names whatever names you want as long as you know what it does. In the room itself, we're just going to add that in, not a big deal. It won't have any sprites, so you can place it wherever you want. But for us, we are going to need the create event as well as the step event. And for debugging purposes, we need the GUI, draw GUI event as well. I'll maximize these so you guys can see a little better. And like I said, we are going to have these different phases and I've decided to use an enum for it. An enum is basically a class that has certain that holds a group of constants, variables that you can't change at runtime. So I'm going to call my enum phase, and we're going to fill in for each of these. Each of these steps will, of course, be a phase that includes the win, lose, and, and turn phase itself. So let's add all those steps in now. All right, so let's wait till the text turns red. And if your enum is set up correctly and you haven't made any changes to the default colors for GMS2, then they should all turn red. Now we're not done with this yet. The next thing that we actually need to do is store each of these phases into a single variable, something that we can change at runtime. And so I'm just going to store these phases into a combat phase variable and we are going to read off of this and run code based off of whatever phase we are currently in or whatever value this is naturally we're going to want to start at the very beginning so i'm going to default the phase to phase dot init and we're done for the create event for now let's head into the step event and we are going to use a switch statement. So really briefly, a switch statement is a much more readable if and else statements. Um, it functions more or less the same, but it's a little more manageable than it would be compared to say, using a whole bunch of if statements. Just That's just a really simple explanation for it but uh, we're going to use a switch for this one to control our code. All right, so to actually create um, a switch statement, we can't use like if or else in there, or we can, but the first thing that we actually need to do is write a case break statement here. So the case break is basically consisted of the keyword case and then a value followed by a colon. And then after that, to close off this section of code, we need to use the keyword break with a semicolon at the end. Now, the reason why this is coming up with red is because we actually need a value for combat phase. So in our case, let's go ahead and put in the init phase. All right, so now GMS has no complaints, it's fine. And basically what's going to happen when we write the code in is when this combat phase equals init, which is what's going to happen here, it's going to go ahead and say, okay, I understand I'm going to run each and every single line of this code until I hit the break. 
That's exactly what's going to happen. Because we're in the step event, it's going to constantly loop through that state. And so it's going to run that code over and over again until we tell it to stop. And for now, let's just fill in the rest of these different cases. So we need a case for each and every single phase. So let's do that now. All right, so now that we have each and every single phase in, let's try drawing those phases to the actual game itself so that we can see. And to do that, all we really need is the draw text, draw text function, not event, the function. I'm gonna put my code right in the top left-hand corner, but you can draw your debug code or you don't have to draw debug code at all. It's just for demonstration purposes on my end, but I'm going to draw mine at zero, zero. And of course we need to debug something. We need to print out some sort of string. So I'm going to write combat phase out here as a string. So that's all done. Let's take a look now if we run the game. We can see here that it's now at zero. How do we therefore loop through each and every single one of these phases? It's quite simple. All you actually need is you need this line here and you need it in between the case and the break statement. So if you put code between in between a break and another case like here, it's not going to run. I don't think it'll come up with an error, but it won't run there because it's not inside of these areas. It's not between the case and a break like what we have up here. So from in it, we want to go to start turn and then start turn goes to wait, process, check, finish, and turn win and lose for now. So let's go ahead and write that in as well. And just to let you know now, we are going to add some control code so that we can artificially move from check finish to end turn win and lose. But uh, don't worry about that for now. Let's just uh, keep writing the code as is. Now, this gives us a bit of a problem. How do we go from check finish to end turn win and lose? Because if we go to end turn, it just goes back to the start of the turn. That doesn't make any sense. So we're going to get to that in just a second. Let's test out and see what happens when we try to run our game. The numbers are just going to go crazy because it is in the step event and we are just looping through all of this code over and over again. There's no way that it's being controlled. So let's knock out two birds with one stone. We are going to put some control code here in the check finish phase. If we have a look at our diagram again, we can see that check finish will lead to either win, lose, or end turn. Since we don't have any units on the field yet, let's do that with some keyboard checks. And for me, I'm going to use if keyboard check and I'm going to use release. You can use any keyboard function you want, but I'm going to use release. So basically when we're pressing down a key and we let that go, it'll run whatever code needs to be run. And 
And so basically it's going to look like that. So whenever we release space, it's going to the end of the turn. Let's see what happens when we press that. So there you go. You can see that now it's stopping at number four, which if we look at the create event, it lists down all of our phases. Let's count the numbers of which phase we're actually stuck on now. It will remember your computer numbers start at zero. So zero, one, two, three, and check finish is number four. All right, so that matches up. If I press space, you're gonna see that that was really fast, but you, you saw hopefully that the numbers went from four back to one and then two, three, and four again. All right, so that's basically how our control code is going to work. Let's fill in the rest of the control code for both phase win and phase lose as well. So let's take these two lines, copy paste it, and make some necessary adjustments. All right, so basically what I've just added in is when we press enter or when we release the enter key, it's going to go into the win phase. And if we press or release the control key, it's going into the lose phase. There is a difference between these two phases because if you think about it, if you win the encounter naturally, you're going to go back into the overworld, right? Or to the whatever adventure screen you have that's outside of combat. And of course, if you lose, you go to the game over screen or whatever happens in your lose code. We don't have anything for those two particular phases. So if I press enter, it's going to six, but it, we don't want it to go back to the start of the loop. We want to exit this combat scenario and go back to the non-combat scenario. So maybe you're moving around the map. We don't have any code for that, but just to let you guys know, in these two sections here, that's for you guys to fill in in your own version. So I'm just going to leave a note for you here, like so. All right, so these two phases, the win and the lose phase, is for you guys to fill in. For now, guys, this is it. We've set everything up that we need to do. In the next video, we're going to spawn in some basic units into our scene right here in the initialize to round off these first three videos. In any case, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. That's all for me. Bye-bye.